So I can't wait. It's five past. I have to deliver 20. I'm gone from here. Okay. First of all, I'm really sorry that I had to fly in this morning, but I had to be in London yesterday evening. Um, very interesting uh, day. And one notion which I brought with me from London, and I'm really fed up with us, shipping industry, beating ourselves overhead all the time. Then we are bad boys, then we are not doing something, and so on and so forth. We can't continue doing that, in my opinion, because youngsters will not come. If they see us, grumpy guys, always complaining, always whinging, if I was entering the market now, I would say, I don't want to be part of it. We have to do something ourselves, be a bit more proactive, a bit more positive. The subject I'm going to talk about is definitely not a light-hearted subject. It's a tough one. And uh, Apostolos put me in front in a spotlight as a first speaker. I will try to set the scene, but my spin is going to be very positive on SOS. Because as a ship managers and ship owners, you guys, and I'm pointing finger, you guys have done a lot. You have done more than your government. You have done more than associations and organizations could have done. Because you are prepared. And why am I saying that? because number of vessels being hijacked now, after we've got armed guards on board, is minimal. I'm not happy with the situation, don't get me wrong, but what we ship managers and ship owners are good at is managing things. We are managing things. We have not solved the problem, far from that. Having armed guards on board is just managing it. Having political will to establish good government in Somalia, having political will to do something with the problem, root cause of the problem, is something none of us can do in this room. But what we could have done, we have done. Background. SOS campaign, you probably can see my badge here, and uh, you can see a little logo in the right bottom corner. It's not that old, actually, if you look at this. It was 1st of March 2011 when it was launched by five founding partners. But more importantly, now, 31 supporting organizations. And it would be you guys in Athens who would know how difficult it is to get competitors, if you wish, together to work on something. This is unprecedented. For the first time, a round table on the piracy 31 organizations, associations got together and pooled resources. What does it mean? Are you familiar with BMP4? Mm, I'll ask again. Are you familiar with BMP4? I'm praising you, so you have to tell me yes. Yeah! Okay, what's on the page 32? <laughs> oh, come on, you said you know. Not really. You've got people to look after that, don't you? Somebody had to pay money for that. It was you through your organization and associations, okay? Books would not be printed. Committees would not meet. Flights would not be arranged. Somebody has to be behind it. SOS is behind it. We are not for profit organization, and when I say we, as you can see, I'm wearing the badge of SOS, but really, I'm not paid by SOS. Uh, SOS is non-profit, and every other association organization is giving people to participate. John sometimes speaks on behalf of SOS. It could be Peter Swift, it could be Alistair Evitt, it could be Bill Box. Any who is available and willing goes for seminars, conferences, trying to raise awareness of people who have never heard of us. Dependent on practical help, financial contributions, and moral support. One very, very important outcome of this is an uh, organization which Shirak will be telling you all about, which provides a very tangible resources to you. And guess what? Free of charge. Because you've already paid for it, to be perfectly honest. And you should be proud, because there is no other organization in the world like your organization called Humanitarian Response to Piracy like SOS. You have done it. First campaign to unite so many bodies. Objectives for us. Media. We have been talking about that. 
we had to em uh, employ PR company. We seafarers are not necessarily very good. We could be very good with media. We can be very good as an expert on the subject, but we needed someone who would know how to talk with journalists. That's why we've got a PR company working for SOS. I've already mentioned in previous session, general public. If I were to go out of this building now and ask about the pirates, what do you think the guy on a scooter would tell me? I'm looking at my Greek colleagues. What do you think? What would be the answer? Do they know anything about the pirates? When was the last time Greek journalists wrote something about the piracy? Three weeks ago. What was the case? What was the spin? What did they write about? Ah. Okay, armed guards, good. Sort of positive or not necessarily? No. Okay, homework to be done. As I mentioned before, shipping industry is very shy. When things go wrong, we, press is very quick to pinpoint on us. SOS is trying, and I'll show you what we have done so far, to raise awareness. I have to be cynical here. If it's not Greek citizen who is hijacked, the Greek newspapers will not pick up the subject. And at the moment, uh, I don't know what's happening in Panama, but there are three vessels out of seven flying Panamanian flag. I wonder whether Panama is actually writing anything about it. Business leaders, industrialists, a lot has been done in UK, up to the point that UK finally changed the stand on the armed guards. You probably don't remember how adamant they were not to allow armed guards. And it was work of SOS, on the scene and behind the scene, to allow us to manage. Because without armed guards, we wouldn't be able to manage, not to solve the problem. Because the very bad news for my colleagues here from the security companies is, we want you unemployed. We want the system to work so piracy is eliminated. When the piracy is eliminated, you guys are unemployed. Politicians. As I said, if it's not a Greek who is hijacked, Greek politicians couldn't give a monkeys. Look at uh, US. Look at UK. Only when they, they citizens get hijacked, press gets interested. <laughs> Hammer home human and economic cost of piracy. It is amazing how much money we are spending on piracy nowadays. And because it comes from different angles, it doesn't have an effect on regular people. We had a situation, I think it was May 2011, when we were really, really close to something which would be disastrous. But on the other hand, I think it could have, could have shaken the, the world. Filipinos would not go to sea, okay? Unions in Philippines said, enough is enough. You guys are not going, you're not allowed. 33% of seafarers wouldn't go to sea. It would hit Athens, big style, because you employ them. You wouldn't be earning, you would be paying for your demurrage, but more importantly, UK wouldn't have Coca-Cola, chips, fish on the shelf within three, four days. It didn't go ahead. Our campaign was averted because we thought it would be far too drastic. We were really close to, to have a huge campaign which could have an effect. And I have to say we were very unlucky. And I know it sounds terrible, but then we had a tsunami in Japan and all the media interest shifted there. And when we were again very close to build up another campaign, Libya came along. So we now probably not going to raise the uh, focus again because situation is under control. And a lot of politicians are obviously misunderstanding this whole situation, thinking we don't need to do anything. There is nothing happening there. And that is disastrous thinking if you think about it because that looks like we need another Titanic to awake people. Hopefully SOS is working with your support 
and will manage to get to those guys who do not understand without Titanic scenario. And united and uh, unstoppable global lobby. I'm a bit concerned about that because I think we had a momentum. Last year when I was here and I was talking, we had a, we had a serious momentum. Now it looks like we are not. And I think again, because we are managing the problem. We don't have disasters, disasters and people are just thinking that the problem is gone. Activity to date, strong brand identity. I think in shipping we have achieved that. Outside of shipping, I don't think so. I tell you what amazes me. How many people have actually uh, either ringtone or text tone of SOS in their mobile phones? And those radio officers sitting here, and I'm not a radio officer, but unfortunately I'm old enough to be trained on the Morse code. Every time I hear SOS, my hair stands on end. Someone is calling for help. And that could be just a lady receiving text message. It's a huge abuse of SOS, to be perfectly honest. It's like having a child crying, Mom, help me, on your phone. And that's SOS. That's how I read it. Design and build a campaign website, done and dusted, I would say. Website is pretty good. That's what it looked like. I haven't got a time, I was told, to go into. Last year I was able, and I was able to show you how many of you, listening to my speech, were already registering there. Because we had, in this, oh, I can't, yes. In this area you will see Greek flags as soon as you send a letter. So I'll be checking tonight. This number is obviously old slide. There is another slide I'll show you in a second how many of us has already signed up to the petition. But live piracy map is there, should you not know. It's a very good source of information. We did press advertisements, e-shots, Facebook and Twitter, and presentations at events like today. Training agenda, we are trying to put as much as possible information out to the world, give you support, help you and assist in cases you need. And it became very, very clear that in order to prepare you, ship owners, ship managers, we needed to create humanitarian response. We needed psychologists. We needed to have a 360 approach to the subject. We know how to put the barbed wire, we know how to put the arm guards, but we were absolutely not prepared how to tell the wife or children that father is not coming back. Hopefully not coming back for a few months. But there were cases, as far as I'm concerned, 67, when the seafarer is not coming at all. And can you imagine the same record in air industry? It would be screaming and shouting everywhere. We do produce support materials. We tried to manage media relations, and few films were produced. We are lobbying political influencers, and as I said, UK was probably the most spectacular success. I'm coming to the end, I'm afraid. Here we go. That's the film which I can show you, but you can go, if you are on our website, you will see that was one of the very first films which we have seen last year. Results to date, United Voice, and this is the slide I was telling you, 32,000 supporters. I'm not happy with that. We've got 1,300,000 seafarers. That looks like we, seafarers, are not even taking care of ourselves, not to mention our families. Facebook fans, Twitter followers. Um, no doubt you want to know where Greece is. I'll show you in a second. 650 films, 8,000 visits on a website. I thought actually then I'll see... Oh yes, sorry, support from politicians. I like this support very much, Slovak Republic. For those who don't know geography, it's a landlocked country with 18 vessels. But anyhow, politicians were very keen. They are supporting us, being a bit cynical here. These were the newspapers we did manage to put the word through, either through the advertisement or publications. These were the articles. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with some of them. And this is interesting. You guys are okay, I would say. 
you are taking things into your hands in Greece. You are claiming to be the biggest uh, nation in Europe, therefore you should be ahead of United Kingdom, I should say, because there's only 12,000 seafarers in UK and there's some would say 40,000, some would say 35,000 Greek seafarers. But as a matter of fact, I'm Polish and there's 40,000 seafarers in Poland, more than in Greece, believe it or not, and we are not even here. So I've got homework to do in Poland. How you can help? Send yourself a letter. It's only two clicks away. You go to the website and you will see how easy it is. Follow campaign on Facebook and Twitter. Put the SOS badge. Run articles. Talk about that. You would say, what can I do? I'm just an individual. I, do, I can't do much. Yes, you can. Because if I'm talking to the politicians and I tell them that I've got 200,000 followers or whatever number, then they start listening. Distribute campaign materials. Mention the campaign on your website, for example, whenever you are talking to your local guys. Share information. If you need anything, you've got those two email addresses with the real individuals behind. Still need convincing? You can watch this film. It's 10 minutes film, I have to say it's long, but it's quite grasping. The good news is, I can tell you, father has been released. But when the film was done, those girls, daughters talking about father and trying to raise money because owner went bust and wasn't insured, wasn't a nice story at all. Arriving on time, not really, two minutes late. I'm really sorry for that. Thank you.